my main takeaway from the 49ers local pro day. This was today. The Niners had their local pro day for a bunch of people. You know, pursuing the dream probably won't get drafted. Um, but this was interesting, all right? So Brandon Ayuk and Javon Kinlaw were there mm-hmm. watching. And they were the only two really players from the team there. I was interested. Like, why Why you two? And they're watching. They're on the sideline. They're talking uh, to, like, a PR, a PR guy. And all of a sudden, I hear him say, someone say, like, hey, they want to talk to you. And they leave. And all of a sudden, Kinlaw goes to John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan goes, excuse me, Brandon Ayuk goes to Kyle Shanahan. They're, 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 they're standing right there watching practice. And, um, you know, this is right in front of the media. Like, they know this is right. First of all, this wasn't Brandon Ayuk's idea. This was the team's idea. It was almost like a photo op. Look at who Kyle's talking to. Look mm-hmm. at who John's talking to. And John was talking to Javon Kinlaw. All for like 15 minutes, and Kyle Shanahan was talking to Brandon Ayuk for 15 minutes. That's all we saw. I don't know what they were talking about. Maybe if people could read lips, they could go on my YouTube channel and try to figure it out. But I do have some takeaways from this, and I'd like to know what you think. First of all, remember the uh, the narrative about about um, Brandon Ayuk being in Kyle Shanahan's doghouse last year? Yeah. Yep. Of course. How could you forget that narrative? <laughs> that was fucking bullshit. That was fucking bullshit. Okay. He was never in Kyle Shanahan's doghouse. If okay. there is one. He was in Jimmy's doghouse. Mm. Jimmy doesn't look down the field. Jimmy doesn't throw outside the numbers. Jimmy and Brandon Ayuk are a bad combination. Who did was Brandon Ayuk playing with his rookie year when he put up all those numbers? He was playing with, uh, well, who was Brandon Ayuk Rollins. playing with? Nick oh, you're talking about Rollins. two years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Sorry, sorry. Yes, yes, yes. I thought you said last Mullins, year. I'm like, you know well, what? they only played with Trey Lance for a Nick game. Mullins Although, ain't that great. But Nick Mullins will throw the will throw the ball down the field. He doesn't. Give he will, ball. but also his second best game the whole season was with Trey Lance in Week 17. That's right. So, anyway, so everyone was like, "Why was Brandon Ayuk absent? Why was he MIA for half a season? Was Kyle mad? Was he not blocking well enough? Did he not? Was he not practicing well enough?" I don't know, man. It seemed like they were ha- they were real cool today. It seems like they have a real good line of conversation today. I'm really thinking that Brandon Ayuk was never in Kyle Shanahan's doghouse. He just wasn't, for whatever reason, Jimmy didn't like him. Jimmy didn't like him. And now that Jimmy's on the outs and Debo is doing his thing, Brandon Ayuk is front and center. And Kyle Shanahan is all, I mean, who do we think was the reason the Niners – was the person pushing for the Niners to trade up for Brandon Ayuk? John Lynch, the strong safety, or Kyle? <laughs> no, I mean, it was Kyle. Kyle's guy. Yeah. Right? And if Jimmy was like, oh, I don't know, like he's like showing me up, or I don't he's not, I don't want to throw down that far, I can't – fine, you're gone. I think Brandon Ayuk – I mean, my main takeaway from the local pro day is that there is no issue between Brandon Ayuk and Kyle Shanahan. Yeah, I'm going to I'll take it a little bit different direction. I think I, I would agree. I don't think that there's an issue between those two, but I certainly think that Kyle was showing him some tough love. And I, I think that the evidence there is Brandon and I, you talking about those conversations during I believe it was the bye week, if I remember correctly, right, where they were able to kind of iron things out. And I think that that's just the way that Shanahan is. I mean, I do agree. I was his guy. There's a reason that. He was drafted and they traded up for him. He likes Brandon Ayuk a Hell lot, yeah. Yeah. but that doesn't mean that he can't show some tough love. I mean, I love my kids to death, but sometimes I show them tough love. Right. True. And so I think that's what was happening. And maybe, maybe Shanahan realized, and, and this goes back to a lot of my frustrations with Shanahan. And, and again, I'm going to heap cr- credit or praise his way is that I feel like he's overcome these things a little bit. I think he realized at some point, wow, this is not the way to handle this kid. Maybe it's worked with these other guys, but it does not work with this kid. We got to actually have a conversation here and I got to tell him what's going on because sometimes just telling a guy, you got to learn to be a pro is not good enough. You got to show them or tell them and walk them through what that means. And he was able to do that. So I want to give him credit for that. But also, I don't know if it's Jimmy doesn't like him, but I can tell you what. Jimmy can't, he just simply can't make those throws. He can't take advantage of Brandon. Ike. He cannot take advantage of the issue that, that the, the, the coaching staff had with Brandon. I'm guessing, I don't know, is that Brandon would get open. 
he'd be wide open down the field and wouldn't get the ball or the ball be over his head or be in the, I mean, the dirt. And what would he do? What would he Brennan? Do? Yeah. Oh, he, yeah. You he'd throw a little, little fits. Little do? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I think what maybe was happening was copying like, dude, you can't do that. You're 23 years old. You're in your second year. You can think what you want about Jimmy Garoppolo, but what have you accomplished? That's a bad look for you. And now I feel like what Kyle was saying by having that long conversation in front of the media with Brandon Ayuk is that he's graduated. That's over. That tough love period is over. You're 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 entering year three. You're an upperclassman. Debo over here, we don't even know where he <laughs> he might not even be in the team in two weeks. We need yeah. you to step up. Are you ready? And I think Brandon Ayuk is. Well, I don't know, but I think that's that. I, I'm guessing that's what that was about. You're a guy. Yeah, I I would say the other couple interesting things, and <laughs> may or may not go this way, but first of all, they're out of the same draft class. Second of all, wouldn't it be interesting if those were the guys that are brought in, and eventually Debo does get traded, and Kinlaw was there to replace Buckner, and Ayuk is there to replace Debo? I just find that that dynamic pretty interesting. Um, again, I, I, I don't think Debo ultimately does get traded, but if it does happen, I do find it interesting that those are the guys that were there because one thing that I said last week or the week before grant is I felt like Debo, if this was a college program, Debo's the one that you send to the new recruits to set the tone with them. And this right here, what they did, this, this pro day thing they did is kind of like a college thing, right? You're you're talking to the walk-ons, you're catering the walk-ons or potential walk-ons. And who do you want to set the tone? Well, they chose Ayuk and Kenlaw. Maybe if Debo had his contract locked in or they weren't at odds, maybe Debo would have been the guy that was there, right? And so I, I do find that dynamic interesting as well is, hey, we did get rid of Buckner and may, who knows what's going on with Debo, but the guys that are here to kind of carry that torch they're here. Those are the ones. And you're right. They've graduated and it's their turn to be leaders now.